Support for today's episode comes from Dane Products, a sexual wellness brand with a goal of closing the pleasure gap. I personally love the versatility of the products. And if it says it's a G-spot vibrator, you could also use it on your clit too. It's so many options. And as a Boonie Breakdown listener, you can receive 10% off your purchase by using the code Booney10. That's Booney all cap letters, one zero. Details on how to purchase can be found in the show notes and on the BooniBreakdown.com. Hey y'all, it's your girl Booney, and you're listening to the Booney Breakdown Podcast, your source for all things responsible and ratchet. All right, welcome to episode 219 of the Booney Breakdown Podcast. Uh, this is our season closer. This is it. This is the last episode of season 11 of the Booney Breakdown. Uh, it's just going to be a solo episode with your girl as we wrap up some stuff. Again, I want, well, you know, we're going to do a typical five spot episode. So if you've listened to the podcast before, you know what the five spot is. It's five points. We do it less than 30 minutes. We're in and out on this episode as we wrap it on up for the season. I do, again, want to thank you guys for extending grace and space to me because I just got thrown for a loop at the end of April and I really hadn't found my mojo. And I think it's taking a lot more energy than I thought and planning back up for the live shows and doing the season and all that great stuff. So we're just going to wrap this shit up. (laughs) I'm going to take a summer break. We'll be back um, after Labor Day. So it's that like September 12th or something, but we'll be back uh, after Labor Day. We're going to take some weeks off, regroup, get re-energized for the podcast and have some dope fun with the live shows. All right. So we're just going to do this episode a little different than a normal setup of an episode um, since it's a five spot. So no pick of the week, no general housekeeping, because that'll be weaved in throughout the episode. So first up, shout out to uh, the homie KG, because he is our official political uh, correspondent for the podcast for my own personal life. So he thought he was going to squeak by this season with no episode. He really, really did. And America really America. Um, and so episode 218 America, fuck yeah, with the responsible fave KG, you got to go run that back. You got to go listen to it. We got some feedback. Someone said, Booney, excellent episode. I feel like my IQ just went up 10 points. So you might learn some things. Like, <laughs> Kenny knows all that stuff. Like, you, you, if you listen, he knows the nitty gritty that most people don't know. And so I feel like he can make really informed, well-rounded decisions <laughs> because he investigates and he reads shit that I won't read. <laughs> now, let me take, to be fair, He will send me articles and if he sends it to me, then I feel like it's some point in there that I need to listen to that I need to, (laughs) I need to pick up on. So I'll read it. So if you have not go back and check out episode 218 with the responsible fave KG. All right. Number two, I didn't do anything. I didn't do much this holiday weekend. Um, I was thankful for the extra day off. We're always thankful for long weekends around here, but I didn't do anything special, nothing fun. Just chilled, relaxed, did some organization projects in the house, which these days, that's how I know I'm getting old. That was exciting and fun to me. (laughs) But throughout that, um, the second point I wanted to talk about was shout out to Essence for putting Essence Fest, a.k.a. Auntie Con, as they called it on Twitter, on Hulu. Um, that was something I didn't know I needed, but I'm glad I had it. And now I will never go back to an Essence Fest in person unless the Boonie Breakdown is being sponsored by someone. <laughs> um, Essence is fun, but it's not something like, for me, I didn't see the appeal of people who go every year, every year, back to back, the same thing. I also the time that we went, um, I guess that was like three years ago. Let me say this. I would go back also. Like, like, let me just say, it's not trash. It's just a lot. I think too, because I love New Orleans, you can't really enjoy all New Orleans has to offer during, during an event that big. Like the restaurants were so slammed and we would leave like at breakfast, we would try to put our name on a wait list for a restaurant for dinner. Because if you didn't, 
you weren't sitting down like the weights were ours and that's one of the greatest things about new orleans is the food like who wants to go there and eat whack right but it was amazing to sit on my couch or lay in my bed or wherever I was and get up and go to the bathroom and eat a meal and drink or whatever I was doing and enjoy the concerts. Like the feed on Hulu was great. Um, I watched a good amount of them all each night. Um, I did fall asleep on the first night, but then I also heard out that like they cut Nicki Minaj. So I did not miss much because the, the videos I saw on Twitter, mm -mm, I ain't miss much. Um, <laughs> it just sucked on that second night with the iconic Janet Jackson. The sound was off, but it was so great to do that. And they showed some of the super lounges. Like who can forget fucking Pokey Bear in the super lounge? If you watched it, if you know, you know. <laughs> if you did not watch it, then you need to Google or go on Spotify. I don't even know if that nigga's on Spotify. He may not be, but it was great. I hope that the Essence team keeps the partnership with Hulu and they do that every year. It was awesome. You know, Twitter, Black Twitter always makes um, watching something more grand of a fair. So that was always dope um, to watch it on the couch with all your internet cousins. So it was great. So shout out to the team over at Essence. Next up, U.S. H E R R A Y M O N D. <laughs> Look, I done loved that man since the My Way album. We used to read Write On Magazine and all that shit, and you get the posters and put them on your wall. I used to listen to the song from My Way with Monica like every night before I went to bed. <laughs> and so to watch Usher's Tiny Desk was so amazing when the image first dropped last week that he was recording one it was so exciting it lived up to it I've watched it multiple times I'm probably going to watch it again it got me so excited because I have tickets and I'm going um to his show in Vegas in the fall and this just got me so, so, so hyped. Even though I know, even though the this, this show's supposed to be a little different than the show that he had last year, but Usher Raymond the fourth let everybody know he still has the chops. He's still cute. He's still charismatic. You forget that he's been married and divorced twice. You forget that he's a father because he still looks so young and good. I don't follow him on social media. I don't follow a lot of celebrities because all that stuff, it just became too much for me. So I had to clean up the feed, but I just forget about all those things. And so it was just so great to hear just really good singing. And I was really happy um, that he picked Eric Bellinger and um, the other guy, his name is escaping me right now to be their backup singers. I personally like Eric, um, visit his stuff on Spotify if you have not, but shout out to Usher. God, he still looks good. <laughs> and I think it's so good because you look at the young boys and we've talked about this because, you know, R&B singers was having a tough week and I should just came and shit it on everybody. But also in terms of his age, like, I hate that people kept saying him and Chris Brown, him and Chris Brown need to do a versus. No, absolutely not. Like nobody. No, no, no. Because Chris Brown is looking a little, a little coke. He looks like a junkie. I'm just going to say it. The loose jaw, he smoking, the blunt. he don't look good. He looks like shit. And I can only imagine what he's going to look like as he continues to age and continue to do his recreational uh, <laughs> hobbies. But Usher looks leaps and bounds better than that boy. And he older than him. So I'm just tired of the comparisons. I hope the people listening to the tiny desk are even tired of fixing their mouths to say the shit like Usher. I think he's starting to cement that he may be in a league of his own as well. He's in a league of his own. And the rest of these little R and B boys just, they can't compare. They cannot compare. And also side note, I don't like him on the new city girl song though. So <laughs> they can take that back to the drawing board, to the trash can, whatever. But that shit was whack. Um, and I was hoping like, okay, Usher's doing it. Maybe mm. I just have to realize, like, I'm not a big fan of the city girls. And this was not even a point that I was going to talk about, but I just, I really feel like I'm not, 
I'm not a fan. I am not a fan of the City Girls, Carisha and JT. I think I like some of the little bops just to hear at a party. I never play that shit on my own. I never go on Spotify and open and search City Girls and play anything that they've put their their voices to. Also, they opened Essence Fest one night. And it was really sad because they went so early. It looked like it was 30 people in the Superdome. But they had the energy of two middle school girls. Like, it looks like it was a camera in somebody's bedroom. And we were just watching them joke around. Nothing about it seemed professional. It just looked stank with the G-string. And I'm like, am I old? Am I old? Am I getting old? Like, she just looked stank. It didn't look cool. It didn't look fresh. Like, and cause and and not shitting on them, cause even Summer Walker boring ass went up there and just stood there with a microphone and and shed shade across a few times. And I liked her tits. Like she had on a see-through, <laughs> a see-through top that was holding on by a thread and a barely a skirt that was just covering the vag. Um But she looked nice. So it wasn't even that, you know, I enjoy some crash. She looked nice. They just looked stank and boring. And I just understand how they were so out of breath. They weren't doing nothing. It was no choreography. It was no backup dancers. It was just them and doing half twerks, kind of twerks, twerks, playful twerks. I'm tired. If you're not twerking and busting it open like motherfucking Megan Thee Stallion, then I don't want to see it. <laughs> Entertain me, impress me, do something. But doing some old lazy twerks while you singing twerker later, eh, could have had a V8. Um, that was a total digression. <laughs> that was not the plan. That was not the intent. But I really just don't see it for the city girls. I understand their place. Like I said, the songs be a nice little bop in the club when you're at a little party or something. But I'm not writing home over it. Um, yeah. I, uh, Oh, 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 and one last thing before we divert away from the Usher, all the tangents I've had about this point. Kudos again to all of the creative folks on Black Twitter who come up with all of the watch this Usher memes. Every last single one I've seen has been funny. I'm not over it yet because every single one has been funny. Even the raunchy ones, even the pure ones, even <laughs> even the ones that brands have tried to you do for their own brands. Every single one has been fucking hilarious. And so we stand a king, even though that is that is my worst fear of becoming a meme for this very reason. Those things never die. Like this has been going on for days now, which is eons in social media world. And so in a few <laughs> in a few weeks we'll move on from this there'll be some other meme and then someone's gonna bring back that usher watch this and it's back memes never die they're always there so <laughs> these have been funny though i've enjoyed like i said every single one that i've seen has been hilarious so <laughs> shout out to black twitter all right number four <laughs> I always love when people speak truth, right? And our episode, shit. I've done, did so many episodes now. I used to know the numbers and the guest or the topic to memory. And now it's a bit harder for me to do. But I believe she was episode 145, Glamazon and Tayomi. She tweeted, <laughs> I can't stand when a guy with a short peen wants to be throated like stir stop pushing my head into your crotch you don't have no more dick to give there's levels you just can't reach stay in the main cabin of my mouth you don't have credentials for throat class (laughs) and then she put it on instagram and said intercom fantasies are great but you just gotta know your limits bro basic economy peen must remain in the main cabin thank you for flying glamazon on airways know your limits and be respectful forced entry is a no-go don't overstep the boundaries or else the air marshal will see you off this flight baby and um it was interesting because i started reading some of the comments and people were saying well isn't this body shaming and no, she didn't say men with small penises were trash or men with small penises were the worst. 
So I feel like that would be body shaming. I just think she was trying to state a fact and advocate for those of us who may put a penis in your mouth every now and then. That, sir, if you don't have it, you don't have it. And I can't do what you want me to do when you don't have it. Right? I thought that was a conversation I had not seen because it is always the notorious, the guy pushing your head down. Whether you're just sitting up straight kissing, he starts pushing your head down because he wants you to go to his crotch to do some things with his penis in your mouth. And it's just not fair. <laughs> but I loved this one because it's just like, don't do, you can't, I can't make it happen what just cannot happen. It's impossible. So we have to live in the realm of the possible. <laughs> So I'm like, shout out to Glamazon Tayomi because that was it. I commented and she commented back. (laughs) She commented back. I was just like, sis, laughing emojis, but all of the facts. And she says, you already know I'm not down for it. And so, again, I feel like as much as we advocate about here, about advocating for your own pleasure and speaking up, I do feel like part of good sex and good inner sexual activity It's also advocating for when things aren't going right as well. So this is one of those things I'm going to need you. It's the way you can say, please stop pushing my head. You don't have to say, maybe it it might make you uncomfortable or you're in a tough spot if you're like, you have no more dick there. (laughs) But you could just say, please stop pushing my head. You don't have to give an explanation. That's all that is required for him to stop fucking pushing your head. It's very easy. It is that simple in my opinion. So that's that that's that so shout out to glamazon Tayomi, who always says what needs to be said when those of us don't even know that it needs to be said because that's not even something that i would have thought to have said <laughs> and last one number five all right you guys should have known it's coming this is the last episode of season 11 so the next time Some of you will hear my voices at the Boonie live shows. We will be, if you've been living under a rock, I don't know. Sometimes some of you guys are like, I haven't seen a flyer. I didn't know. I didn't know the date. But if you have not heard, we will be in Baltimore on July 23rd. There are limited tickets left there. Limited, limited, limited. So you want to head on over and get those. We will be in New York on August 13th. We will be in Raleigh, North Carolina on October 8th. Now, Patreon gang, those tickets for Raleigh will be dropping, um, if you guys can believe it, um, this week, July 8th, will be 90 days out from that show. So those tickets will be dropping this week first for Patreon gang, and then broadly for the wider audience to cop those. But again, limited tickets are left for the Baltimore show. Um, Our guests there are our problematic fave, Brian, and Tashia, um, she was also on, I think, episode 194. I Love Jordans and Good Dick was her episode title. Um, we're going to do an Instagram live on Wednesday, July 6th. That'll be fun. <laughs> It'll be exciting. It'll give you a little taste of what the live show will be. Um, then we're in New York. We have friend of the podcast, our favorite astrologer here, Mecca Woods. I think outside of Brian, Sheikah and Kenny, she has been on the podcast the most. So it only made sense for me to go to New York, to go to her town, to have her as a live show guest, along with our problematic faith. And I'm not saying just yet who our guests are for Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, I believe Patreon gang knows, but if they don't know, they'll find out um, this week when tickets are dropping. So again, head on over to the booniebreakdown.com backslash live. You can head to the link in the bio on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. Um, Yeah, get the tickets. I'm excited. I want to sell out all three shows. Um, so that would be cool. Our first time doing live shows in three years. I can't wait. We have the giveaways. We have the goodie bags. Um, it's just going to be a good time. And so depending on the city, your drink may be on me. But um, show up. Show out. Let's have fun. And we'll have a good time. So I can't wait to see you guys this summer while we're out on hiatus. Again, season 12 of the Booney Breakdown podcast. We'll be back after Labor Day. We're taking off the rest of the summer because we got live shows, motherfuckers. And I just can't focus on both things. <laughs> so if you need me, 
please follow me on Instagram and Facebook at The Boonie Breakdown. We're on TikTok too at The Boonie Breakdown. We're on Twitter just at Boonie Breakdown. But you guys know we're most active over on Instagram. So during this hiatus, if you miss me, uh, head there. If you also miss me, you can head on over to patreon.com backslash the boonie breakdown. We have a very fun um, group chat over on discord, which is always fun with the girls and guys, a few guys um, who participate in our Patreon group chat. So I am signing out for the rest of the summer. Again, can't wait to see you guys in Baltimore, New York and Raleigh, North Carolina. All right. And so that is it for me for season 11. I hope that you all stay healthy, safe and sane. Yes. I hope that you save some money. Don't go broke because outside costs so much money. (laughs) So have a dope ass next couple of weeks, guys. Stay healthy, safe and sane. Thank you for listening. And remember, the ratchet in me always honors the ratchet in you. Ho, my stay. Until September.